Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how to do a Photoshop mock-up like we have right here, placing this image on this cup, and also placing a picture into a photograph in perspective just like that. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to share, and of course, click on subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you won't miss on any of my videos coming up in the future. Okay, we'll start with this one here. I'll just remove this one layer. Just click on that and then we'll hit the trash can or just right click and choose delete either way. There we go. And now I have that picture over here. There we go, just a basic cover of time bit. I'll just grab that background layer and drag it over in here and then we can close that file down. So there you are, we now have this on a new layer. We'll need to resize this, so I use the Control T keyboard shortcut to bring up the control handles. Now I'm in Photoshop 2020 right now, and in 2020 if I grab the control handle and pull it down, it's going to scale this proportionately. If you're in an earlier version of Photoshop, then if you pull on a corner like that, it's going to scale non-proportionally and it's going to look kind of strange. You'll be you know, changing the ratios. So in 2020, just pull on the corner. If you're working on an earlier version of Photoshop, hold the Shift key down and pull on the corner to get that proper proportional scaling. Now I have no idea why that's the way it used to be, where it would be non-proportional. It would look like this. I'll hold the Shift key down here and it would you know, do this kind of a thing, which of course is not what you want. You want proportional scaling. So again, I'll hold the, the Control T keyboard shortcut. There we are. Photoshop 2020. Just pull the corner in, Photoshop 2019 and earlier, hold the shift key down and pull the corner in. Again, I don't know why that's the way it used to be. It should have been proportional all the time. I don't know why it took Adobe 30 years to figure that one out, but it should be proportional and then have the non-proportional as an option. So just stretch that down until it fits properly. Anything right about here looks pretty good, something like that. Now this guideline that's popping up there, that's a center guideline for the picture for the, you know, the whole document, but the cup is a little bit off center, so I don't want to have it snapping to that point on and all. Just kind of visually find the center point for that. Looks like right about right about there is pretty good. Okay, now that we have it basically positioned, all we have to do is to warp the top and the bottom so that the curves match the curve of the mug. I'll just first click on the check right there and set that proportional scaling in place. Let's now go up to the Edit menu and come down to Free Transform right there. There's our control handles again. Now in Free Transform, go up to that little button right there. That's the Warp tool. Click on that and the control handles change. Now the ones in the corners here, those are your regular kind of control handles. And these in here are handles that will change the curve based on that control handle. So this handle right here works with that point. This handle works with that point. This one works with that point. So each corner has two points for the two sides of that corner. I'll grab this top one here first and I'll just pull it straight down. You see how that warps the picture right there? I'll do the same thing on this one and I'll warp this down as well. And now it's just a matter of just kind of visually matching the curves so to get a nice clean curve. Now they should be pretty close on these pretty similar as far as the spacing on that picture. But that looks pretty good right there. I think that's okay. Same thing for the bottom. Just grab this little control handle right here and let's pull this down. I'll pull this one down and just pull them down until they match. They should be, in this instance, basically the same as far as relation to the picture. And look for a nice matching curve on that. And there we go. Click the check mark and we're all set. There it is. We've now warped this picture to match the curve of the mug and it appears to be printed right on the side of the mug. So real easy to do just using that warp tool. Let me show you where that is again. Simply go up to edit and then free transform or use the control T keyboard shortcut. Both ways work and that button right there brings up your warp control handles. Okay, let's take a look at our second one over here and that's this business card stack. 
This one's also very easy and also using a standard transform. I'll just delete this layer, right click, and then we'll go ahead and do delete layer. There we go. And here's my business card image. I'll just float that and drag that in. Okay, let's just get this out of the way. Now for this one, you want to get your corners right onto those corners. So having some guidelines to help you will make a big effect here. Let's first double check things. Let's go up to the View menu. Make sure that Snap is selected and also Snap to Guides is selected. Make sure you're seeing your rulers. If you're not, just make sure that the rulers are checked here as well and make sure that Extras is checked also. That's going to then show your guidelines. Okay, I'm going to zoom in now on our different corners. We'll zoom in on the top corner up here. It's a little hard to see this one, so zooming in closer really helps. And then I'll grab the ruler and I'll pull a guideline down right down to that corner. You only need one guideline on this one. So there's our guideline, kind of faint. You want to make sure that your guideline is outside of the image you're working on. In other words, a vertical guideline would not work here because it would be inside of this image, but a horizontal one is fine. I'll hold the space bar down now and just pull the picture over here to the right and let's find our next corner. There it is. This one can get dragged in from the left hand ruler. Just right at the corner like that. And again the space bar and let's find our bottom corner. There we go. And I'll pull this one straight down, right down to that bottom position. That looks good. One last time space bar and let's find that right side corner. There we go. And again this is a vertical one so that the guideline is outside of the area you want to place that on. Let's now go back to fit screen and you can see our guidelines in there. Okay, we're on our layer one still. So we can bring this one up. Now because we have snap two, if I pull this over here, it's going to snap right to that guideline, that vertical guideline right there. So all I have to do is just kind of move this up until it reaches that corner position, which is right there. So the snap two makes it nice and accurate. Now we need to distort this to fit into that perspective. So I'll go up to edit, come down to transform and choose the distort option right there. There's your control handles. We're now in distort mode. So we can now grab a control handle. It will move just this one anywhere you want it. So I'll pull it up. It's going to snap to that top guide and I can then just position that right at that corner position. Do the same thing for your last two corners. Grab your corner, pull it up here and get right onto that corner position. There we go. And then the final one down here. Again, using that guideline. And I'll put it right in there. Looks good. So there we go. Again, hit that check mark. And let's hide those guides. I'll go up to view here and then just uncheck extras. And there we go. There is the business card placed into perspective on that stack of cards. Looking like we have a whole stack of business cards. So there it is, two different ways to do product mock-ups. Here's one on a curved surface, and here's one on a flat surface in perspective. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share as well. The more likes and shares I get, the more videos I can do. Also, don't forget to subscribe as well, and take a look at my channel for a lot more videos. Okay, and I'll see you next time.